This month's feature program at the library highlights biking education series in Quincy. I'm joined today with Irene Lutz from Quinn Cycles. Irene, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your personal biking history. When did you start biking? Um, oh, my personal biking history. This is fun. Okay, I started biking when I was a kid, like most people, and I don't. Most people remember um, probably falling, but once they get the hang of biking, having a joyous, joyful time, and I do remember both of those things. But then I stopped biking for a while, and I rediscovered it when I was in college, and I started biking around town when I was here in Quincy, and biking down to the beach. And I just discovered this new passion for a, a way to get around that uh, didn't require me to have to find a parking spot and pay for gas. So that was really exciting. And then later, when I met my husband and we, we were married and we had a, a, my son, um, we started biking for transportation a little bit more as a family. And he started, my husband that is, started by commuting. And I started, we put a seat on our bike and I took my son around and we'd bike out to, um, kids programs and just started biking more and more, started doing our grocery shopping by bike. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, we decided that we would just sell our car and use our bikes as our main form of transportation and supplement that with um, public transit. And we were fortunate at that time that Zipcar was becoming a thing, so we use that as well. We are a very multimodal family. Great. It must be so nice to not have to worry about finding parking spaces and gas prices and all that fun. Yeah, it does alleviate some transportation stress, but there are other factors that come into it, like planning and, um, and thinking about the weather a little bit more, perhaps. Right. So everything's a trade-off. And you're with an organization called Quinn Cycles. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Quinn Cycles and what you do there? Sure, I can. We're a volunteer organization. Um, the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church started um, the organization about six or seven years ago and called together a bunch of people who wanted to make conditions for cyclists in Quincy better. And we incorporated as a nonprofit and we've been working with the city. Um, some of our members are also on the Mayor's Bicycle Commission and we um, have rides all, all year through, I'm sorry, not all year, April through November. We do two rides a month throughout the city. We like to highlight Quincy's um, beauty and accessibility. So we have an annual ride to all of Quincy's beaches. We also have an annual ride from Nut Island all the way up into the Blue Hills. So we like to show off our, our city, but we also like to invite people who might want to just try biking, who aren't comfortable riding on our streets or who aren't um, avid cyclists. So we are very social biking group and we like to make people who aren't necessarily identifying as bicyclists or or people who bike into people who bike because Great. they gain comfort and skills this month's session is on uh, commuting by bike and that's taking place on january 8th at the main library can you give us some key points that you'll be talking about on the 8th sure i'd love to so bike commuting is one of you know commuting is our primary transportation as as um, people in the city, how we get around, how we get to work, right? So some people want to try commuting by bike. They're fed up with the T breaking down or they're fed up with congestion and um, maybe see bicycling as an opportunity to fit exercise into their day without having to schedule time at the gym. So it's really nice to get get that done as you get to work as, and home as opposed to having to spend more time doing that. So what what we're going to cover in the bicycle commuting basics classes are how, you know, why would you want to bike commute in addition to those reasons. Um, bike commuters are the happiest commuters apparently according to studies. We're going to cover um, how to carry the stuff that you need. So um, whether you use paneers on the on the rack on your bike, whether you use a front basket, the good old fashioned but not very comfortable backpack. Um, these are all the options and we're gonna have things to show and um, styles of this equipment that can help people um, see what's possible to carry by bike and how to do it. And then we're gonna talk about what you might wanna wear. Some people commute a short commute, so they just wear what they wear to work. Other people might um, want more bike specific gear to wear for a longer ride. If you're going to Cambridge or Boston, that might be something you want to consider. Um, we'll talk about route choice because 
how you go. A lot of people who are, who are new to biking think primarily, oh, I have to go the way I drove. And I don't, I, there are some people who are comfortable riding a bike on Morrissey Boulevard. My husband is one. I'm not. And so I might choose a different route. So how to, how to plan your route to get to your place of employment. And then when you get there, how to lock your bike, how to, um, how to know if you're going to need a shower and, you know, what, what you might think about when, you, when you're planning that, you know, your bike commute and seeing if you have a gym nearby. There's lots of options. Like people, people are accommodating at, their, at places of employment. And also um, how, to, how to figure out what's gonna, what you're going to do if the weather changes or you need to leave work in a different way. How are you going to get home if biking is not the option? Like I have kids, other people have kids, things come up. You might have to leave work in the midday and you might have to get somewhere faster than a bike can get you there. And what can you do then? What are your options? Right. Would you say that employers are becoming more willing to be flexible with bike commuters? Bike commuting is a great way to promote the health of your employees and encourage encourage physical fitness, which um, when, a, when an employee shows up and they've had a, an energizing workout, they're going to feel better at work that day. They're going to stay healthier. Um, there have been studies that, shown, that have shown bike commuting and, and walking as a commute can keep your employees happier and healthier. So I think that it's definitely something that employee, employees consider um, in terms of well-being for their workforce. Um, I think, yes. <laughs> and it can also be a great way for uh, some employees to blow off steam if they have a rough day at work. Too. Oh, yeah. My husband, yeah, he gets home. He's like, oh, thank God for the ride today. <laughs> I, I definitely had a bad day, and now I feel better. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything we didn't cover yet that you'd like to cover? I would like to thank all the sponsors for this program that um, have made it possible. We are working with the Mayor's Bicycle Commission, of which I am a citizen member, but um, the support that we've gotten from that organization is, is essential to the series being available. Also, Traffic Parking Alarm and Lighting have donated um, these great light sets. So um, biking in the winter or, or early spring can um, be challenging because your commute puts you in the dark hours and having lights is a, a key visibility um, requirement and so TPAL donated these little light sets it's a white light and a red light that can clip onto your bike via rubber band here um, we'll be giving those out as part of the series to anyone who needs one and um, I'd also like to thank the library you guys have been so gracious in welcoming us to your space and allowing us to do some slightly dirty work in there. Um, and I would also like to thank the law firm of Breakstone, White & Gluck. We are one of their KidSafe um, partners for giving away helmets. And so they have given us um, a number of their larger sizes helmets so that we can give those to riders who may not have one. Um, protecting, our, protecting yourself uh, and your one and only brain is um, it, it, it's essential and, and not required, but highly recommended for, for adults. And so we wanted to honor the kid at heart in everyone and provide safe riding equipment. Well, I know that we're really excited to have such an important program taking place at the library, so thank you for helping us out with putting this great program on. Happy to do it. For more information on the Bicycling Education Series or to register for the programs, visit thomascranelibrary.org or give the library a call at 617-376-1300, extension 3. Thank you.